we're talking to uh, Blake Harris, who's really fascinating. Um, he's written a book called The History of the Future, Oculus, Facebook, and the Revolution that uh, Swept Virtual Reality. Um, but but it, is, it is interesting to me that he is a liberal, doesn't necessarily like Donald Trump, um, and really liked Facebook going in, had unprecedented access. And... Uh, and then when the inventor of of Oculus, this this entrepreneur, this you know twenty some year old kid, sells to Facebook, and the and the the election heats up, all of a sudden he is in trouble with Facebook, and they force him to put out a deal that says he's not voting for Trump, he's voting Libertarian, when that wasn't the truth. He plays ball. He's he's told to go take a vacation. They they frame it as he's decided to. He's on a, a conference call, uh, and he finds out that he had asked for even more vacation. And you know what's coming at the the end of this. We we pick it back up with Blake Harris. Who Blake? I have to tell you, I'm I I love people. Um, who you know I may disagree with uh, sometimes vehemently on on things, but are open minded enough to go well. Yeah, but this part is true, or this part is true, and just let the chips fall where they may. You're you're a very rare species. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if you know that. No, thank you. And unfortunately, I've come to realize that, or, or to believe that that is the case. You know, my book was originally due to HarperCollins. The manuscript was due in September of 2016, the same month that this all went down. And I ended up spending an extra two years, um, you know, for no pay, working on this thing because this is a crazy story. And you mentioned earlier that, you know, you hadn't really heard about this. And and it sounds kind of bonkers because, you know, every other Facebook scandal to date, Mark Zuckerberg is not directly involved and he can always sort of throw up his arms and say, oh, I didn't know, or, you know, that was some other person's fault. But he is the one who personally wrote this statement, uh, which was just bad for him to even put that in email. Um, and, 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 you know, you're like, how, how is this not national news? How is this not breaking news? But then I talked to other journalists and I understand why, you know, these are the journalists. These are journalists I know under the context of they read my first book about Sega Nintendo and loved it. So, I, you know, I think they have a somewhat positive opinion of me and. I reached out to a lot of them to tell them that they had the story wrong, and and they and, and I, you know I offered to send them evidence. I told them I was the only person who actually interviewed all the participants in this and had all the archival information, and they basically said, "Yeah, but who cares? He's a Trump supporter, so maybe it's inaccurate." <laughs> but jeez, but so and, and, wow. and you know, if if I had told that to my mom and she said that, I still would be kind of bummed that she didn't care about what was true and what was not. But these are journalists; these, these this is their job. And, and then when I told them, you know, not only was the reporting about Palmer wrong, but the reason he was fired was for political discrimination, they almost laughed my face to say, yeah, but that's not the kind of discrimination I care about. And I, <laughs> yeah, political discrimination is perhaps uh, probably, you know, less of a persistent issue than other forms of discrimination. But when it happens, it's still bad. We can all agree upon that, I thought. Um, though apparently not. So. So do, are you finding yeah. anyone starting to wake up, Blake? Is there anyone? Because, I mean, uh, I know on the, the, the right, I have found a few people that are, in fact, several, that are, are like, I, I'm, I'm, I'm out. I'm done with this. I'll call balls and strikes and, you know, my side screws up. I don't care. Uh, I will say that they're screwed up here because this is insane, uh, are you finding any anybody that is starting to open their eyes to what is being created? Um, unfortunately, less than you'd expect. You know, I, I, being a liberal and existing in probably some sort of you know liberal bubble, election day was a wake up call for me. You know, I was very upset, but my thought was okay. You know, the the voice of half the country, the majority, um, the electoral college has spoken. I should actually listen to them because I find Trump repugnant, but they don't. And they are my fellow citizens. Let me figure out what I'm missing. Mm -hmm. And I tried to do that. And, and for, I feel like for the 24 hours after the election, a lot of other liberals were in a similar boat of, you know, we got to talk to the other side. And then they instead decided to just double down and say, no, 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 these people are just stupid or they don't understand that they're voting against their self-interest or whatever. Um, and, and so 
I, you would have thought that more people would be waking up and just want to call balls and strikes and say, all right, I don't like Trump or I don't agree with his approach on this, but I actually think a strategy here was a good one. And that's not the case. Like, you, you know, you, you mentioned right before you had me on that uh, your show from last night um, was now on YouTube talking about the border in a non-political way. And I found myself almost laughing because on the left, there's no such thing as non-political. Um, <laughs> yeah. Specifically in Silicon Valley, you know, there, there was a story last week that two weeks ago, Google had put together an ethics board for artificial intelligence. This is crazy. Uh, that sounds like a pretty good idea. Yeah, yeah. Um, really good. Within less than a week later, it was disbanded because there was so much outrage internally at Google uh, because one of the participants was a conservative. Yeah, the uh, Heritage Foundation, which is not yeah. the Heritage <laughs> Foundation. you got to be kidding me. That's a radical group to them? Exactly. And, and that's really what I found. Um, in so many ways, and it seeps into so much of what Facebook does um, as a company internally and also externally in the product. It's like this idea that, yeah, all opinions, all political opinions are equal, but then this animal, animal farm esque way, it's like, yeah, but some are more equal than others. Hmm. And, you know, hmm. every uh, conservative perspective is, it's not just another opinion. It's not a different way of looking at things. It's not, they might be right, I might be right. It's just a value judgment. You know, if you do it one by one, it's it's all wrong. It's all harmful. It's all it needs to be fought against. 